Good morning. Good morning. I need to figure out how to tap into this energy this morning. <laughs> it's good to see everyone here this morning. We welcome you, uh, our, our guests. We also welcome those who are with us on, worshiping with us uh, online. We're thankful that you have chosen Sugarland this day to, to worship with us. We got some more nervous energy over in the corner. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but that's good. That's good that we all have that joy in our hearts and we're here gathered together to share it with our brothers and sisters in Christ and, 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 and get a message that's going to uh, motivate us for the week. We have a, a card. And it says, with special thanks to all of you, to know you is to know people who are kind, considerate, and thoughtful. To know you is to be grateful for the special things you do. For everything you've done, for being, for being the special people that you are, thank you so very much. Thanks for the prayers, cards, texts, messages, and thoughts for our family during the bereavement period of my brother, James. Continue to pray for us as we navigate these waters. That's Brother Jimmy Holman and Sister Priscilla Holman. Uh, we have a prayer request from Sister Deidre Phillips. She's asking for prayers this morning for Jackie Oliver for safety from her uh, domestic violence situation. Brother By Byron Sims, I just met him this morning. Uh, prayers for, for him and his young men at the house that he's over. He pray for patience, mercy, and grace. Reginald Phillips is asking for prayers this morning for his mom, Valerie Phillips, for strength and health. And also pray for his uncle, Samuel Phillips' health. He's still in the hospital. We also want to be in prayer this morning for Sister Kathy Brooks. She's recovering from a fall. Uh, pray this day also for Brother Abraham Davis and Sister Florine Moore. They're dealing with some health challenges. And we want to pray a special prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving for Decina Wilmore Bradford. Prayer of thanksgiving. She's making a, a health recovery. At one time, she wasn't able to speak or move, uh, but she's recovering so well that Baylor University is going to have her uh, be a motiva motivational speaker for the rehab facility that she's in. So we pray for that and for our Brother Wilmore. At this time, please bow with me. Our Father in heaven, the great God that you are, we humbly approach that throne of grace asking you to forgive us of those things we have done contrary to your will. We ask that you be amongst us this day as we uh, study more about your word, that we can let our Christian light shine in the things that we do. We pray for those who are in bereavement at this time, I believe the Talley family, and we pray for the Holman family, that you give them the strength and the courage that they need to, as Brother Jimmy said, navigate these difficult waters. We pray today for Brother Reginald Phillips, uh, for his mom, we pray for her health, that you will continue to give her the health that she needs and the guidance from Brother Reggie as he administers to his mom and also his uncle Samuel, who's also in the hospital. We just pray that they will continue to uh, get better. We pray, pray for Brother Sims and the work that he's doing. Uh, we pray for the young men at the house that he's uh, supervising. We pray that you continue to give him pace Give him patience, mercy, and grace as he's asked for to help deal with those young men and the struggles that they have. We pray today for Sister Deidre as she helps her uh, close friend, uh, Jackie Oliver, deal with the family situation that she's in in a positive way. We pray this day uh, for Brother Wilmore and the Wilmore family and for Tessina Wilmore Bradford. You continue to help her heal and help her tell her Christian story as she heals. We pray for Brother Abraham Davis, and 
Sister Florine Moore. We pray for Sister Kathy Brooks as she continues to recover from the fall that she recently had. Again, be with those who are in bereavement. We pray for those who are traveling. We pray for those who are having health challenges and struggles. We pray for your church here at Sugarland that we will continue to reach out to our community, reach out to our family, and help uh, your church family where we can help them and assist them in this struggle of life that we're in. We pray for Brother Park as he breaks into us the bread of life, that we will receive it with an humble heart and let our light shine in the things that we do when we're away from this building. We pray for our young people of the congregation that, that uh, we will uh, be better role models for them and help them through that struggle. Again, continue to be with the service that we offer up to you this day, that it be one that will edify your name, edify the uh, just the true meaning of love. This I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to say good morning, Sugar Land. Good morning. It's great to see everyone here this morning. And being so lively, like uh, all that energy, we don't want to hear it in the singing this morning. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, God has woke us up this morning, so we have something to praise Him for. You know, we've gone through a pretty tough week. I don't know if anyone <clears throat> realized that, you know, I, I woke up, I realized yesterday after I got talking to my son, I was texting. He said, Y'all have to come to come to the neighborhood. And, uh, I got to look and I said, well, I didn't think it'd come to our neighborhood, but after looking look at the track, all of the fences that were down through the neighborhood and the damage that came through, it, I, everything went over here, and so we didn't have any damage, so we've been blessed. And uh, so like I said, it could have you know, just torn through the neighborhood in so many ways, but like I said, we've been blessed this week, and so just, uh, just like to say, let's lift up our voice and praise this morning, because that's the way we thank God, is praise Him. Man. So first election will be Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. <clears throat> Trouble sometimes are here, feeling in heart. We hit fit, freedom we are. Oh, oh dear, now we can stay on your heart to God saving the chance. Singing rock, seek the way here from drop, Christians away. When Jesus is coming soon, morning or night, or on noon, many will be there. The trumpet will sound. Oh, and all of the dead shall rise, rise and be in the sky. Oh, and where no one dies, ever will find out. Love so pretty, cold. Bye. 
seeking the truth, that we may say something, do something, our Heavenly Father, that they may understand the gospel. We pray, our Heavenly Father, that we uplift our members, our Heavenly Father, and at this time we also pray for all of those that have lost loved ones, our Heavenly Father. We pray for the Cisco family as well, our Heavenly Father, on their time and season of, of loss. We pray, our Heavenly Father, if we continue to go into our service, that we will do all things praising in your sight. We pray for our minister, Brother Parker, and his family, that he will continue to bring the word. Our Heavenly Father, continue to encourage us. 
prayer and God also for our elders who at all times on God. I have the Father to be kind, welcoming, but I, all things make sure that nothing false comes into the congregation. We pray our Heavenly Father again for our members that you will continue to bless us and that we may be blessings to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Our next selection be Heavens on the Other Side. Heavens on the Other Side. We'd like our basis to lift up your voice this morning. Our sopranos, alto, and tenor. Let's go ahead and lift up our voice this morning. Heaven is on the other side of oh, heaven. Is on the other side of oh, heaven. Is on the other side of oh, heaven. Is on the other side. The side and the I will make it, I will make it. Heaven is on the other side of heaven. It's 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 on the other side of heaven. I will make it. the side. 
before Brother Parker come before us, we're going to sing a song called, I Woke Up This Morning, Jesus Opened My Mind. I woke up this morning with my mind to stay on Jesus. Yes, and I woke up this morning with my mind, and my mind was stayed upon the Lord. Yes, and I woke up this morning with my mind, and my mind was stayed on Jesus. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, and I'm singing and praying with my mind. And my mind was saved on Jesus. Yes, and I'm singing and praying with my mind. And my mind was saved upon the Lord. Yes, and I'm singing and praying with my mind. And my mind was saved on Jesus. Singing hallelujah. 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 Yes, and I'm walking and talking with my mind. And my mind was staying on Jesus. Yes, and I'm walking and talking with my mind. And my mind was staying upon the Lord. Yes, and I'm walking and talking with my mind. And my mind was staying on Jesus, singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, they say you can't hit your neighbor with your mind. Just stay on Jesus. Yes, and you can't hit your neighbor with your mind. And my mind was staying upon the Lord. Well, you know you can't hate your neighbor with your mind. And my mind was saved on Jesus. Singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, and I'm singing and praying with my mind. Just saved on Jesus. Yes, and I'm singing and praying with my mind. And my mind was saved upon the Lord. Yes, and I'm singing and praying with my mind. Just saved on Jesus. Singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us all say amen. 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 What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. If you feel the blessed to be here, say amen. 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 God has been good to each and every one of us. God is good to us even when we're not good to him. As a matter of fact, God is good to us even when we're not good to our own selves. So we just thank God so much for who he is and for all that he does. Uh, we are, well, well this Sunday we'll start, well I guess last Sunday evening we started a, uh, evening, a series with guest preachers on the theme in harmony. In harmony. And so this Sunday we want to also run that same thing for the next three weeks in harmony. Which is also the theme for the year. And so in harmony, through the morning worship, today we'll talk about harmony in the church. Uh, next Sunday, if it be the Lord's will, we'll talk about harmony in relationships, and then the final sermon would be harmony in uh, harmony of the scriptures. So today, harmony in the church. Let us read uh, a verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and the verse is number 10. The Bible says, now I plead with you, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Let us pray to God. Father, you've been so good to us. 
We just want to say thank you for all that you've done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. We thank you for you, for your Son, and for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence with us today and for allowing us into your presence to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we're not deserving you. But thank you for your grace, which has qualified us to become partakers of your divine inheritance. As we open up your pages of inspiration today, please pour into our hearts what you would have us to know. Give us the strength to apply it in our lives and help us to be better in the future than we've been in the past. In Jesus' name do we pray, Lord. Amen. So every once in a while, my children will, will you know, uh, argue. Well, not every once in a while, argue. argue, argue, argue. <laughs> but every once in a while, the subject of the argument feels, uh, you know, they may just bring up a topic. And it's always interesting because what I find is that what one brings to the other's attention is something that he or she does their own job. Okay. Well, how can you be mad at somebody for doing something you yourself do all the time. Y'all, we live in a space. We live in a space where there is increased polarization. There is so much division. Everybody is looking out for his or her own Self, without care or concern for the fellow man. People are degrading other people and treating even human beings as if they're not good. As a matter of fact, we live in a space where animals are often treated better than humans. We live in a space where people have uh, uh, certain positions that what happens is that they take on these positions in order to benefit their own selves. They influence decisions in order for uh, them or somebody they know to either get paid or extend their influence. There are clicks which occur where you are considered in or out. People suppress the truth. When the truth is spoken, oftentimes you have people who go behind the person who's telling the truth through text or email or phone calls or even in-person conversations, and they try to sway opinion the other direction. Right. You, we have a lot of strife and division. And we have it to where people convince others that it's them who, who has to have the influence or it's them who have to be in charge because they're convincing others that they are smarter than everybody else. Now, I say that we live in a space like that, and I would like to say that that space happens in our families, which it does. I would like to say that that space is limited to American politics, which obviously it is. But the space that we're talking about this morning where you see some of this stuff occurring is none other than the church. And as the church, how can we tell somebody else what they are doing wrong when we don't have it right our own sin? Y'all all right this morning? Y'all going to play with me this morning? <laughs> So today we're going to talk about harmony in the church and why harmony is so important. And so let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 13. Now, Paul is writing this letter and he says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Now, let me stop here because one of the things that I would invite us to not do 
is to look at this verse and to interpret it as, as if this verse was written to a multiplicity of churches that's tell, that Paul is telling them that they have to be uniform in their practices. It seems as if almost every time I heard a sermon from this verse, that's the message that's being sent. All right. Um, that's not what this verse is saying. All right. Um, the fact is that this verse was written to a single congregation. And the reason why Paul wrote this verse is not, he's not saying that I want all congregations to, to, to be this way. I mean, that's obvious, right? I mean, if, if, if a church is going to follow the scriptures, then there are going to be multiple similarities. But we're not in that scripture today. We're in this scripture today. And this verse was, was written to a single church. And it wasn't talking about divisions among various churches. It was talking about divisions within that one church. All right. So when he says, I want y'all to speak the same thing, he's talking about a single co the congregation, the, that one congregation. He says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. In other words, y'all, you know, you, you're talking about divisions among the brotherhood. You got divisions in your own church. He said that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Verse 11 tells us, he says, for it has been declared to me concerning you. My brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. He says to them, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? He said, was I crucified? No, Christ was, was I crucified for you, Paul said? Or were you baptized in the name of, of Paul? So Paul is writing this letter to a church, a people he's very familiar with because he spent so much time with them. He established this congregation, became friends with them, but now after he left, he received a message for, from one of his uh, co-laborers in the gospel from the church that was in her house. And that message says that those folks over there ain't doing so great. They have a lot of division and strife at their church. They're fighting and fussing on who's in charge, who's on top, and whose gift is more important than another. All right. And they're broken off into sects. They are divided and they have cliques. So Paul is writing to them to help them fix some of the issues, help them fix some of the issues that are occurring. So let's walk through this sermon together like this. I want to give you an outline of what we'll talk about this morning. First, we'll talk about the problem. All right. This is very helpful if you're taking notes. If you don't, I guess you're going to just remember everything. <laughs> the problem is the first thing that we'll, we'll talk about. Number two are proximate causes. Proximate causes. Number three is root cause. Number four, we'll talk about goals, and then number five, we'll talk about the solution. So again, the problem, proximate causes of the problem, three, root cause of the problem, four, we'll talk about goals of how it should look. In other words, idealistic, and then number five, we'll talk about the solution or the fix to the problem. So, number one, the problem. The problem, what is occurring in the church at Corinth? So remember, in the first century, they had a, a level of the Holy Spirit that gave them special gifts. Now, these gifts were very important to the first century church because they did not have the written word of God. And since they did not have the Bible, they did not have the ability to do what we can do today, which is bring your Bible, open up the Bible, and read what God has to say. So what they had to do was depend on direct revelation from God through prophets, or they would depend on spirit-led apostles who would either travel to them or write letters to them to give them instructions of the way God wants things to be done. Now, some of these gifts included gifts of prophecy, but they also included gifts of tongues. 
And when they included gifts of tongues, they also had to include gifts of the interpretation of tongues as well. So they had all of these gifts that were going on in the church of Corinth. Now the gifts itself is good. The problem came when some of the saints started saying, what I do or what I can do is more important than what you can do. Because I can speak in tongues, I am more valuable to the church than you. So Paul was writing to them to tell them, there is no one person who's more valuable than the other. He says, we are all in this together. He says that no matter what you do and no matter what gift you have, we are all under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So everything that we do is for and in the name of and by the authority of none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So the problem is division. Now, there are multiple proximate causes of division in the church. Number one is self-promotion. When people have it as their goal, not to look at the body as if this is something that we are all a part of, but instead, they view the body as something that I could be a part of to promote my own self. That is one way that division gets started. They're not worried about nobody else. They're not worried about bringing glory to God. What they're more concerned with is their appearance, how people perceive them, and bringing glory to their own self. Self-promotion is something that will cause division in the church. Amen. Not only self-promotion, but also groups. Number two is groups. When people have cliques in churches, or well, you are in that group, but you're not in this group, or if you associate with that brother and sister, then you can't associate with that brother and sister. That causes division in the church. You have to be part of one group if you want to do this in the church. If you're not part of that group, then you are prohibited from doing this or from doing that. That causes division in the church. The fact is, is that what we'll see later, what Paul tells them, that is not about us. This is about God. Amen. This is something I tell people. And this is, I'm, I'm learning more and more how, how great technology is and how, how far our messages go. And a lot of times when I'm called to speak at various places, even, even if it's not even in our state, what I'm finding more and more is how many people are tuning in to Sugar Land's worship service. Which is amazing, a beautiful thing. But I often find sometimes people say, well, oh yeah, we got to tune in and hear Brother Park. And I tell people, a lot of times people will come to worship. Or they'll even tell people, I got to go to church so I can hear preaching. Right. Don't come to church to hear me. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you come to church to worship God. Amen. Because guess what? I'm not coming to church to hear me. <laughs> I'm coming to church. Right. I, you know, I ain't coming. I'm coming to worship. We are the church. We don't go to church. We are the church. We are. We are the church. We're coming to worship. So that way we can worship God. So I really appreciate people tuning in. I really appreciate the fact that there may be one or two people who believe that I might have a little bit of talent. But the fact is, let me be the first one to tell you, it is not about me. All right. It is about God. Everything that we do and say, and I guarantee you that everything that you hear me preach and teach is not from myself. I am just the messenger. I'm only going to tell you what thus saith the Lord. 
And so it is important that we not emphasize a him or a her. All right. But that no matter what we do, it's God who's getting the glory. But not only that, not only does self-promotion cause division, not only does groups cause division, but also bureaucratic practices cause division. As well. All right. And so the reason why is that sometimes things could be said or done or, or, or written, that what happens is that it precludes people from serving. Mm. Now, the fact is, is that sometimes when, when, let me say this, process is important. But process should never preclude people. Amen. It is always about people. All right. People always go before process. Right. And that's the good thing about the large church is that the large church is designed to emphasize how important people are. But when certain things are in place, people don't understand that it also it prevents some people from serving right. because what they all what processes often do is ensure only a certain group of people do most of the work. It is essential. It is essential when we talk about in harmony of the church. It is essential that everybody feels welcome Amen. to participate. But lastly, um, uh, uh, competition. Competition will cause division in churches because that's what was going on in Corinth. You have one group who's fighting against another. Well, I am a Paul. Well, I am a Peter. Well, I am a Apollos. So you got all these groups that are fighting and saying, "Well, I got this gift. I am this." I am more important than you. Paul is saying, it should not be like that in the Lord's church. Amen. There should be no competition. Why? Because when one gets the glory, when Christ gets the glory, that means all of us is involved. Amen. It should not be about one person bringing glory to his or her own self. It should not be about me trying to outdo you or you trying to outdo me. And in the Lord, let me tell you, I, I, I've been in the Lord's church for a while. And I've been preaching for a while. And seeing a lot of stuff just like me and you in the Lord's church. But one thing that I see very often is that when you have churches who are set up like this, I'm telling you, it always fails. Always fail because what happens is that every time the church starts to do good, all right, something scratch that yeah. somebody yeah. stand in the way and prevents progress, whether they mean to or not, they prevent progress. And so, what happens is that the church plateaus, and every few years, often the church splits. It is essential, church, that we maintain harmony. In the Lord's church. Because when things are going great, Satan yeah. will yeah. try to stick his head in. Yeah. We got to learn to keep Satan out of the church and say, we're going to go with God. We're going to stick with God. And if you are in that, if you are that person who's, who, who, who stay, you may not know it or not, but I just ask people to, to it would just analyze yourself. Yeah. Stay in prayer before God. God, I want to be used of you, not of Satan. Help me to do what is right for your church. Help me to get involved in the ministry. Help me not to stand in the way of your progress. Help me to, to do what it takes to please you, God, and not to please other people. Because sometimes we'll do stuff not to please God, but please other people. Every work that we do, everything that we do for the Lord is for the Lord. It should not be for other people. And it should not be for ourselves. That's what Paul says. You know what? Is Christ the Bible? Mm -hmm. was, was I crucified for any of you? Did I baptize? In, uh, were any of you baptized in my name? Mm -hmm. So those are some proximate causes of division. But let's be honest. Let's get to the root cause of division in the church. All right. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Y'all all right this morning? Y'all know why? Y'all know why? 
That's okay. If I got to say amen myself, I'm telling you. That, that's what God told me to do. He told me to tell the truth. He didn't tell me to get amen. But, but if you feel a letter, say amen. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Here is the root cause of division in the church. And I, Paul says, and I, brother, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as carnal. As to babes in Christ. Watch verse 6. He says, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Carnality is the root cause of strife and division in churches. When you have a group of people who are carnal minded, you will have division. When you have people who refuse to grow because they think they know it all, you will have division. It is essential that we humble ourselves and put ourselves as servants before the word of God. All churches should be spirit led. And when churches are spirit led and the scriptures come first before anything and anyone else, what you see is that God will give the increase. God will cause progress in the church. But when you have people who's fighting saying that I'm more important than you, or when you have people who's fighting saying that you're not in charge, I am, division will never end. And the church will continue to split every 10 years. Because every time in churches, and all you got to do is case studies, churches plateau, people do. Because there is division. <laughs> Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I think I wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Brother Holy, but I meant 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and let's talk about some goals. How should the church look? So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let's start in verse number 4 and we'll go through verse number 7. 1 Corinthians 4 through 7 says, There are diversities of gifts. But the same spirit. Listen, God welcomes. God wants diversity. Diversity is something that should not be precluded, but actually should be something that's welcomed. Because we come from all backgrounds of life. And it is a beautiful thing when people come from different backgrounds to serve one Lord. Mighty things can happen. But when we get to a point that say that because you are of that background and not this background, you cannot serve. That's where trouble comes. So Paul tells them there are the verses. There's a lot of different gifts, but they're all from the same spirit. Verse number five says what? There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. Verse six, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all and all. Paul, why does he work? Why is it? In verse seven, it tells us that but the, watch this. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. In other words, no matter what gift God has given you, no matter what service God has placed on your heart or leads you to be included in, the fact is you are a part of that service or you have that gift for the profit of everybody that's in you. Everything that we do is supposed to benefit everybody, not just your own self. Your goal, your I mean, your your service is to turn on the lights for everybody. Guess what? That helps everybody. Your service is to plant flowers outside. That helps everybody. Your service is communion. That helps. No matter what you do, that service heals for everybody. May may I say this? Well, I appreciate it. Be honest, I'm going to say it. <laughs> because this is what I've seen in, in church over and over. If God gives you a gift, 
And you are blessed with the ability to serve in the church by working in the area of your gift. Don't always expect payment for your gift. <laughs> y'all all right? Y'all all right? I, 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 I just felt that that's very important because this is, this is something that occurs sometimes. And so if I'm using a gift that God's given, we have to be careful of ensuring that the gift is profitable for everybody Amen. and not just for one's own self. And, and Paul is specifically clear about this, about what, what services, you know, would receive compensation, what service, you know. And so it's important that, you know, say, okay, well, I, I, I did this or I did, so I got, are we doing it for God or are we doing it for ourselves? He says it is for the profit of all. Amen. Now let's look at verse 12 and 14. Let's drop down to verse 12 and 14. Verse 12 says, For as the, as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one number, but many. We are from all back. That is the, that's what I love about the Lord's church. When you take a people from various backgrounds, from all walks of life, put in one place, and we still can have harmony, y'all, that is how heaven is supposed to be. Amen. If we don't want harmony down here on earth, you don't have to worry about enjoying harmony <laughs> up in heaven. Because in heaven, the Bible tells the revelation that there is a number so great that no man can number. And it said that people from all nations, not just black folk, not just white folk, not just Hispanic folk, not just Asian folk, not just Indian people, not just Pat, people from all nations, will be surrounding the Lord's throne. If I can't get along with a brother who don't speak my language here, then you think that I'm going to be praising together in heaven? It's important that we all recognize diversity is a beautiful thing. And the beautiful thing about diversity in the Lord's church is that when we bring it all in, and we are all one, and we're worshiping besides people. Look, in the New Testament, they were they were so split in society where they had classes. You had slave and you had free. But in the church, you had slaves and rich people sitting next to each other, worshiping together. I'm telling you, like it's, it's difficult for us to see through our perspective. But if you're in the first century audience and you're reading about how the church deals. And then how you have rich and poor together. How you have Jews and Greeks. I mean, that's like saying you have the progressive and ultra conservatives together in today's time. You got Democrats and Republicans together. Right. The point is that in the large church, we all come together as one. And the harmony that occurs as a result. I mean, just can you imagine that? Where you have people just from everywhere, but they all singing the same song. We're all worshiping the same God. That's how the church is supposed to look. That's how the church in the first century looked. And I'm not sure why it is, but we harp so much on us being the first century church, when we look nothing like it, we've got to go back to the Word of God, church. And this is very important, very important. And so this is why I, I, I talk about this so much, because I've seen over and over and over again how it impacts churches. And not only that, God calls. He calls us through the Holy Scriptures that if we're going to be the church that he wants us to be, then we're going to walk in the Scriptures the way that he wants us to. We're going to stick with the Holy Scriptures. 
and we're going to look like the first century church. That means we got to do something. That means we, we have to say, you know, God has given me a gift. I'm going to serve. I'm going to roll my sleeves up and get to work. And that means somebody else got to say, that person could work. I'm not going to stand in that person's way. That person actually may have a way that's better than mine. Oh, that person's doing something different? Let's welcome it. Because sometimes we'll say, that's never been done before. Can't do it. Who are you? Who are you to say that something can't be done because it's not nothing to be done? It, uh, nothing never been done before. God says everybody is given a gift. And that gift is to profit everybody else. If I'm not bringing what God has given me to the table, then I'm not giving to the large church. I'm actually taking away from you. Y'all heard what I just said? I mean, just think about that. If I am not bringing what God, if I'm not bringing to the table what God has given me, I'm actually not giving. I'm actually taking away. It is essential that we use what God has given us. And not stand in the way of someone using their gift. Let's drop down to verse 26 and go to the end of the chapter. Verse 26. And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, health administration, variety of tongues. Why did Paul do this? He did this on purpose. Watch that. I'm going to show you something. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all works of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Notice what Paul did. One of the primary gifts that they were fighting about was what? Tongues. Paul deliberately put tongues at the end of the list. He wants to send a message. The person who thinks that you are so important, All you need right. to go sit down somewhere because you're less important. If you are actually using your gift to bring glory to yourself, you are not benefiting the body. So as a result, you are reducing your importance. It is, church, it is so essential that whatever we do, we do for the glory of God. In verse 31, watch 31. 31 says, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I'll show you a more excellent way. Y'all, we talked about the problem, which is uh, division. We talked about some proximate causes. We talked about, we talked about the root cause. We talked about some goals in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, what is the solution to it? Just one word. So easy. It's love. Yeah. Love is the solution behind Kevin. Paul says, of all this stuff, of all the gifts that you've been given, he says, now I'm going to show you a more excellent way. What is that more excellent way? Well, let's look at the very next verse. Chapter 13, verse 1 says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brand or flaming silver. Verse 2, he says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to the feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. You know the verse 1, tongue, verse 2, prophet, verse 3, the Holy Spirit. Again, verse 1, tongue, verse 2, prophecies, the verse 3, verse 3, the ultimate. I'm giving, and I'm also giving myself. So what Paul is saying, no matter how much I give, even if it costs me giving of my own self, if I don't have love while I'm serving, I ain't doing nothing. All I'm doing is making a whole bunch of money. <laughs> I may get glory. I may pat myself on the back. But what I'm doing in the eyes of God ain't doing nothing for his kingdom and it's doing nothing for him. Look at verse 4. 
Verse 4 says, love suffers long. What? I got to be patient with people? <laughs> love is kind. Love is not envy. Love does not pray to self. It's not puffed up. Well, wait a minute. I like doing stuff to be saved. I like serving in the kingdom because it, it, it helped me to be seen. It helped me to get my name called from the poor pit. <laughs> verse 5. Verse 5 says, does not behave rudely, does not seek his own, does not provoke things, no evil. Verse 6 says what? Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Verse 7. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. All right. That's the beautiful thing about it. Y'all, where there is division, the people will fail. The church will fail. But where there's love, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, guess what? All these gifts, where there are prophecies, they never fail. Where there are tongues, they will see. Where there's knowledge, it will vanish away. Love. Love is unending. No matter what service I give for the Lord, the more permanent nature of the service is not the service itself. It's the nature of which I'm working that service. And that service is love. You have people who's done magnificent things in the church. You have people who spent 30, 40, 50 years doing magnificent things. Many times, the thing that people remember most is not what the person did, but the attitude in which they did it. They may not remember them doing a specific act, but they remember how that person loved other people while doing that act. They remember how that person loved people. They remember how people went first to that person. If you want to do something beneficial for the kingdom of God, do it. Grow your seeds up and go to work, but do it in love. Do it for God, don't do it for yourself. And if your attitude is that, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it so I can be seen. I'm going to do it so I can bring glory to myself. I'm going to do it because I need to be in this position so I can influence this decision so I can put money in that person's pocket. What I ask you to do is take a look with the side of yourself and be unwilling to change. Don't do the work. Let somebody else do it. Because if we continue, if, 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 if churches everywhere go in that direction, I'm telling you, in those uncertain terms, that the church will fail. And you have many churches who are going out of business today at a, a rapid rate. And that's one reason why. Because when you look back and run a case study on their history, what you observe is a lot of strife. It's people who are thinking that they're in charge and not allowing the Lord to lead. All right. Not allowing scriptures to prevail. Harm of the church. What I love about the church, as I mentioned earlier, is the way that everybody can come together. And y'all, one of the things, watch this, because not everybody here from Sugar Land, one of the things that you see about Sugar Land is love. And I hope you sense that come right in the door. Amen. I hope you open the door and it smack you in the face. <laughs> you open the door and you got all of it's love. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> and watch this. You shouldn't sense it when you open up the door. You should have sensed it when you put up on the parking lot. Right. You know, when you learn how to, one, one, of, one of the things about going to seminary is not just learning how to execute scripture, but to execute context. Yeah. And, and, and what, what happens is that sometimes you could execute and, and you could when you execute when you execute these contexts you could see certain things that may not jump out to All you. Right. Um, All right. 
And so, you know, for example, if you go visit a place, okay, you, you won't find that here. But when you go visit a place and you come out and or you pull up on a parking lot and like all the cars are parked in one direction, facing one direction, and there's a lot of empty spots closer to the what that's telling you is that I wonder, is there truly? Is this a church of one to make Everybody is ready to run out. All right. <laughs> Is, is our atmosphere articulating welcome? Is the design of our atmosphere articulating love? Mm. And so I, I, I believe, I sincerely believe that when you walk in a sugar and you feel that love. Mm -hmm. And so that, this, this is why in, in churches, when you want something big to happen, you can make three or four phone calls and it happen. Mm. There's no reason to become so bureaucratic that you gotta have 19 committees and 46 meetings no. just to cut light on it. All right. <laughs> well. It feels essential, church, that if we want to be the people that Lord, the Lord has called us to be, for us to realize it's not about me. It's about bringing glory to God. Amen. 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 Y'all, that's all I have. Y'all like that? Before I have a seat, I do want to invite somebody. If you're here and you're not saved, if you're not baptized in the Lord's church, I do want to invite you to become a Christian, to become part of something that's so much larger than yourself. This is amazing. Journey. The Christian life is such an amazing journey. Amen. And what you find in this journey is that no matter where you go, you got people. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. Wherever you go, you got people. Somebody's gonna be looking out for you. I remember going off to college. And 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 my dad picked up the phone, my mom and dad picked up the phone ahead of me, and my brother going out there calling somebody that they knew or in the brotherhood. Hey, my kids gonna be coming that way. Sometimes before some of you travel, what do you do? Text me, you know a church in love? Uh, well, let me find you one. And these days, you got to be careful. Not just any church. Hey, because it may say Church of Christ up there. You know, but hey, you know. So you, you got to read. Sometimes, sometimes I don't know it. I said, I said, I said in the heart. So, heart, hey, heart, you know a church? And heart knows everybody. So you be on. <laughs> and so. But that's good because what that tells us mm -hmm. is that we got people everywhere. Mm -hmm. We are brothers and sisters, even though you live in a different country. I never met you, I don't know your name. Guess what? You're my sister, I'm gonna look out for you. Mm -hmm. Y'all, that, that's what they do in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the world, y'all, they take care of each other. Mm -hmm. Y'all, they ride down. Mm -hmm. In a church, as Christians, you fool, we're gonna ride it down. All right. Somebody said, just ride her down. What is this? <laughs> In other words, y'all, we are there for one another. No matter what. Now, if I'm wrong, you tell me. Yeah. If you're wrong, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Because guess what? We got our best country at heart. I'm not gonna see you doing wrong and I'm taking it wrong and let you go. You know what? In love, it talks about that. It talks about keeping record. Y'all, do you know church folk will keep record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know church folk will kind of worship every Sunday and record notes? <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all never say anybody do that like that. But church folk will keep record. And then six months later, they will call. Well, you remember? Man, I've been doing that for the last six You So what you tell me is that you allowing me to fail? Wow. We got to love one another. Yeah. And if you want to be a part of a mission, a journey, a movement that's bigger than yourself, I invite you to Jesus Christ today. I invite you to get baptized and become a child of God. Sure. Once you're a child of God, guess what? You got brothers and sisters everywhere. 
no matter where you go, you got brothers and sisters. Listen. Listen. Let me, let me just say this. I know I'm done preaching, but I'm not done. <laughs> if you, if you, and I, I, I'm not trying to preach or, or, or nothing like that. I'm, I'm just encouraging. Uh, let me just take 30 seconds. Well, okay, maybe 60. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and just encourage you just for one moment. All right. We talk about the movement that's so much larger than us. If you have young people, if you have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephew, whatever, let me encourage you. Bring them to worship with you. Yes, sir. No matter what, of all the things I and I grew up in a church, one thing that you remember is the relationships. Mm -hmm. I go back to my home church and people that I grew up with, you know, that's still there, they, they you know, they look out. Because you, you have those relationships. Our young people got to have, you, you want to know what, what, what hold our young people in church? Watch this. It ain't going to be you preaching out. It sure ain't going to be you fussing out. <laughs> it's going to be the relationship that they establish with the youth. And even if they leave for a while, and those relationships are still there, All right. that's what they always know. And those relationships is what help lead them back to the Lord. You got to bring young folks to church to worship. You got to bring them here. I just encourage you. Encourage you, please, please, please. I got a preacher buddy who say that his parents drugged him. Yeah. <laughs> He said when he was young, they drug him to church, they drug him to, to worship, they drug him to Bible study. No, we gotta start drugging our <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm actually of the opinion that, that they should come because they want to come. But at the same time, you are the parent. And sometimes you just gotta volunteer on them. But please bring the young people. Please bring the young What hold a lot of people in church today are relationships. And that's why when you look at the pages of inspiration of doing it, you always find that people will always go before process. The church has always and will always be about if you want to become part of this movement today, if you want to be saved, now is your opportunity to get you to stand and send me some of the invitation. Come to Jesus. Oh, Give your life to Jesus today. When you come, when you come to Christ, why are you baptized today? When you come, when you come to Jesus. Will you give your life to Christ today? Think about how good. This journey not going to be easy, but you got to stand in every step of the way. Why don't we surrender your life to Jesus Christ today? We We Let's be over and over and over and over Why don't you have a
thank you for your undivided attention. Hope, we'll trust, and praise that you know something said that we each can apply to our lives and just help us be better in the future than we've been in the past. To this end, I commend you to God, to the word of His grace, which it will build you up and give you inheritance among those who are sanctified. May God bless you. Jesus rules with the power in his hand. Jesus rules with the power in his hand. If tell me that he died on a Friday evening, Savior, he rose on Sunday. Brothers and sisters, we come to a part of the service, which is the Lord's Supper. Acts 20 and 7. On the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29. For I receive of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus in the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, This is my body, which is for you. This do in remembrance of me. Shall we together pray for the bread? Heavenly Father, Creator, Maker of all things, Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come at this time with our mind focused on the cross back at Calvary. As we prepare for the feast divine, we come praying for this bread that represents your son's body. We come praying for those who partake of it. They do so with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In like manner, also the cup. At the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink the cup, ye proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eat it, he didn't drink it judgment to himself, if he discerns not the body. Jesus, we love you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And every large day we take time to remember you, Jesus, for your suffering, the way you hung, bled, and died, the pain you endured on Calvary Cross. May we continue in prayer and pray for the cup. Heavenly Father, we also come at this time praying for this cup that represents your son's shed blood. We come at this time praying for those who partake of it. They do so with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now come in. Jesus rules with the power in his hand. Jesus rules with the power in his hand. In his hand, they tell me that he 
died on Friday evening. The Savior, he rose on Sunday morning. Jesus rose with the power in his hand, in his hand. They tell me that the angel came down from glory and he rolled the stone away. They tell me that the angel came down from glory and he rolled the stone away. They tell me that the angel came down from glory and he rolled the stone away. Jesus rolled with the power in his hand. In his hand, Jesus rose with the power. collection for the saints that have given orders to the churches at Galatia, even so do ye. On the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 9. But this I say, he that sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that sows bountifully shall reap also Bountifully, every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has his first abroad. He has given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth. Forever, you may not give. I am a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. For I'm a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on the battlefield. I'm just a hard fighting soldier, and I'm on the Father, which art in heaven. Father, our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. We come at this time with bowed heads and on our hearts. Thank you for the many, many blessings of life that God which thought upon us from the early existence of time up until this present moment. It's especially a privilege and opportunity we as Christians have to give back a portion of our weekly earning. We come at this time praying for those who gave, those who had a desire to give, but it just took the time and labor to do so, that they too may be blessed to be able to give at another opportune time. We come at this time praying for these funds that have been collected, pray to continue to be used in a manner both pleasing and accepting in our sight. These and many other blessings we ask. In Jesus Christ's name, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, good morning. I want to thank Brother Parker for such a fine message this morning and harmony. I just wanted to come before you to encourage us tonight for our April revival series that began on last Sunday evening with Brother Gerald Moore. Tonight we'll have Brother Mark Thorne from the Huff Smith congregation. And last Sunday night, the attendance was just outstanding. I believe the attendance was 109. Now, I didn't give a goal last week. And someone asked me, how come you didn't give a goal? Well, I wanted to kind of see what the first Sunday night would be. So tonight is 110. <laughs> now, here's, here's, here's the challenge that we have. Now, Brother Gerald Moore, about 35 folk with him last Sunday night. A amen. So that means, you know, we, we got to pick up the slack. Tonight, and then, then one of my good friends who also is deacon over finance <clears throat> told me, he said, Hart, if you were giving out $100 gift cards for raffle, you have a packed house tonight. <laughs> and I wanted to tell him, you over finance. <laughs> Amen. But let's come out tonight and encourage the word of and receive the word of God by Minister Mark Thorne, and let's see if we could. Y'all going to help me tonight? Yeah. Oh, that sure was a weird day, man. <laughs> Y'all going to help me tonight? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 now, amen. I, but look for everyone that can be here tonight. As God blesses us to share the word of God as we are encouraged and revived in the word of God. Great series in harmony. See you tonight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good afternoon, Sugar Land. Good afternoon. That was a great sermon on love and pray to God. The things that he said not only reflect in here, but over the airways, whatever, that we do love you. And we love you that we really want you to be part of this congregation. Yeah. Um, we also uh, have some. Uh, Want to know if there are any guests? Um, if you would like to stand and say anything uh, to my left, uh, or middle, <coughs> or to, to my right. Hi, I am um, Angela Nix. I'm from Pensacola, Florida. I worship at um, Westside Church of Christ. Amen. And I really enjoyed the message this morning. And I felt the love in it. We love to have you. Also, at the top, we have a. Okay, well, we have, a, we have one card, uh, George Cabrera. Uh, uh, would you like to sing? <laughs>
word for me, but for God. Amen. Amen. I don't know the way, but God's going to advise me. I appreciate uh, everybody's uh, love in this church, like they say. That's one of the things that uh, I admire most, your love for the, for the Spanish people. Like, uh, thank you very much. And thank you. Heart that uh, gave that message to us real profound in our, in our house. Okay. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 He was saying that he wants prayer, so please remember him in prayer for uh, his job situation to improve and uh, find better choices. Uh, Sister Cresswell uh, sent a card in for Larry Seward. Um, they come down from Ohio uh, and visit us a lot, but uh, he lost his mother, Marilyn, and they also will be traveling to Florida, so travel, grace, and, and prayer for the family. And as Sister Tally said, well, it was by word, by a spoken word, a prayer, a card, or being present at the service of my uncle. I truly appreciate and thank everyone for their caring support. Amen. So, and that's important that it's part of the love that we should be doing. May we bow. Dear Father in heaven, we heard all the petitions that went out to the Father. We have some that are saying thank you for your help and the church going out and trying to be supportive for them when they are lost. We pray for the ones that are traveling, their Father, and give them safe passage, their Father. Uh, we also pray for Brother Duckett, and he was saying something about his, his, his job situation, your Father. We know that you can do all things. That's why we come to you, dear God. Father, now we also pray even for our visitors and the ones that are hearing, dear Father, that the love that we're trying to put out, that we're trying to bring people to Christ before it's everlasting too late. That's the love that you were trying to give to us, and we're not a perfect people. We try to do perfect. We try to be perfect. We try to be what we are, but we need you in order to do anything. So Father in heaven, please listen to the petition. Please grant those things. So Father, as we leave out, keep us safe. And I pray that when we come back this evening that you keep us safe too for everyone. In Christ's name I pray, amen.